Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. My name is Juliette Clark, and I'm really glad to have you tuning in today. Our guest is all about media today, and I know that many of you are out there and you want to get on TV or you want to get on radio, even podcasts. Um, but today's expert is someone who's been on before that's going to help with that. But before we get started, I want to remind you, if you haven't subscribed, go over and subscribe to Breakthrough Author Magazine. It's a great little magazine, short and sweet. That's why we give it away for free. Um, it's a monthly subscription, so you get new every month. And, you know, we talk about things that people need to know about in the content world, in the publishing industry. And I must say that actually the episode that's going to come out or the issue that's going to come out right after this recording actually talks about um, why you may not want to be in bookstores. So, you know, a lot of great information using LinkedIn Live. So go grab your free copy. When you download, you'll get our first copy. And then from there, you'll get uh, the new copy every month. So www.breakthroughauthormagazine.com. Also, don't forget to go over and subscribe to us on YouTube. If you're someone who really likes watching this on video versus iTunes or reading a blog, we're over there on the YouTube channel. You can find us at Superbrand Publishing. And we're over on Rumble now as well. You can find us under Super Pub. So today's guest is a repeat. Um, her name is Jackie Jordan, and I'm recording this bio in advance because she is a really, really busy lady, and I always feel lucky when I can get her. Jackie's the founder of CEO of the 15-year-old Cutting Edge Media and Content Development Promotions and Booking Platform. TV Guestbert that offers full service promotion, marketing, business strategy, and media services for her clients, partners, and collaborators. TV Guestbert Publishing, a New York Times bestselling publisher ha publishing house, and the Guestbert Academy, an online program offering visibility, media training, and TV Guestbert on training on camera training. She is a two-time Emmy-nominated TV producer, three-time author, and host of Front and Center with Jackie Jordan, a broadcast podcast. She is also a guest critiquer on a news program on Newsmax that's on. Um, about 8.30 on, I believe it's Wednesday morning, where uh, her and a panel go and they actually critique um, media, other media celebrities. And it, it's very interesting to watch because they really get into body language and, um, you know, attitude. And it, it's kind of fun. You can see all the mistakes over there. So I hope you guys enjoy this interview. Well, we are back with Jackie Jordan. Really excited to have her here today. You guys, you heard the introduction. Jackie, welcome. Thank you, Julia. You, I've your biggest fan. So it's so much fun oh, to see you. Thank you. I pay her to say that, by the way. And create um, with you. <laughs> Nicole so, collaborate. So your new show, like I'm surprised you talked to me. You're a big star now over on Newsmax. Um, but what impresses me the most about that show is it it's pretty condensed. Yes. So, so it, yeah. So it's, so let me just give you a little bit of backstory. So I set it, I set up a, a Zoom. Basically, we do Zoom or Skype and we do Skype. So, you know, it's, we're not doing TV studios in the way that we were just even a couple of years ago. So you have to have, I have to have proper lighting. I have to have a backup battery, you know, I, and, um, you know, and I, and I always do a Skype run through when I've got my hair and makeup done and my lighting set and my background. Deep backgrounds are keys to television. Too, too often on television, we have a, we're like right up against a wall, like a mug shot. We don't want mug shots. We want deep, deep backgrounds. Um, so that that's it. And then a lot of times I don't get my topics until the morning of, uh, which makes it really intense. So I, you know, I stay really well read and versed and always have to remember that my perspective is coming from a media expert not you know and because anything other than that becomes my opinion and my opinion's not what I'm on for so those are really important and then anytime I get a topic as I would do with any client that I'm media training we always write out our own speaking points and it's so important um, every one of my clients has to do this exercise for every single appearance and I follow it the same and it's the way I keep from getting all jumbled up in such a short amount of time you know, whether I have three minutes or four minutes, sometimes they don't, I've, I mean, I've been on Newsmax where they've only gone to me for one question and you're literally like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
you know, the, I, you know, I, I do all this prep, you know, the hair and the makeup, I get the, you know, the whole, the whole, the whole scene thing, you know, and I get one question because they're, they're out of time or they've run the, sh- they've already run the show before they've gotten to me. And so, you know, the point, the important point of speaking points is your priority content is first. I say, it's your real estate, your most important real estate. What is the most important real estate, who you are and what you're about to say. I'm Jackie Jordan, a media consultant. And what I can tell you about this topic is boom. So if you get nothing else to say, that's the formula. We call it the opening soundbite. And I'm a really big like believer. If you listen to any of my experienced guests at TV guests, but you will always hear them say the same thing, you know, um, as a New York Times bestselling publishing uh uh, um, New York Times bestselling, bestselling publisher, I can tell you on the topic of plagiarism that, that, you know, what they wrote, the New York Times wrote about, you know, Project Veritas is it's defamation. It's clear defamation. We know those laws. That's it. Like, in, and in that one sentence, I said who I am, what I'm talking about, and the piece of information, take home information, you're going to walk away from, from watching me. And then that is the formula for a short opening soundbite. Then anything else after that follows is just supplementary and new. What you don't want to do is repeat information. So I did a Newsmax on the, um, after Betty White died. And I know her from having produced her as a guest, but I also as I tell the story um, on the, on, on the appearance, I, I met her at the vet and she's a big animal activist and we had her dogs at the vet at the same time. Well, I did my own fatal mistake of repeating a speaking point because I compared her to legendary celebrities like Dolly Parton. There's just what I call like legendary performers. Like they know their stars, but they love their fans. They, and then and they're, they're like a generational breed, like these new influencers coming up. Don't do that. Well, I ended up repeating the speaking point twice because the content went long, which meant that I was actually short on content. Mm-hmm. So to regulate time, you have to do the exercise of speaking points because um, I always tell my clients, you know, a three minute interview is so different than a seven minute interview yeah. is so different than the grace of getting to talk with you for an hour during an interview, which is like a deep dive interview. But when you're looking at your little tiny little dot on the camera and you've got to focus all your energy into that, you get like one or two or three sound bites. And it's intense. And you, so you have to know what your content is. You, you know, you don't need to memorize it, but you have to know the order of it. And that helps regulate time and time structures, um, especially for television. And, you know, because of what you do, what we do with publishing, authors, you know, make these fatal mistakes. Yeah. They, they limit their a couple mistakes that authors make, but the authors, one, limit their opportunity. They limit their opportunity because they think their promotion is about their book. In fact, when I talk to prospective clients, prospective authors, I know I lose a lot of potential authors because they don't like hearing that from me. And I always say, it's not your book. You're greater than your book. I know right now you feel like your book is everything, but your book is a, is a calling card. It's a passageway into bigger opportunities. You will outgrow your book and hopefully you're prolific. And this will be a first of many books and it will define a lineage of career as opposed to just this one moment. And so uh, I always say t- television producers never book a book. They Eight. always book a person. So what is the story the person has? The book is just what we call the plug. It's the unspoken trade out of real estate that the producer gives you for giving their audience free content about your expertise. That's the unspoken trade out. So they're going to plug your book. And really, that's just transactional. That's, that's the transaction. But the authors get so fixed on this is my book and everybody needs to know about it. And I agree, everybody needs will know about it. But they'll know about it if you the author are a storyteller and you, the author can comment on many topics. So I'm going to just give you an example. We have a, a guest who's been with us. Um, we're privileged to have her. She's one of those guest clients that have been like, you know, in and out with us for 10 years. Like she's, she's a lawyer. So we've, we've done, you know, we've, she's been on Nancy Grace. She's been on CNN. She's been on Read the Choice. She's also a PhD in psychology. So we, we did a bout with her on forensic psychology and, and missing children and missing persons. We did a bout on that. She co-hosted with Fran Drescher on the Fran Drescher daytime talk show. Now she's reinventing herself again. God love her. She's got more letters after her last name than anybody I know. <laughs> she's now going after mindful 
uh, eating. So we are getting ready to publish a series of three books. And the book, uh, the first book is called Tame Your Appetite. Well, we just got a media inquiry that came in that was actually about um, anxiety spending. So I went back mm-hmm. to the uh, to the journalist and said, we have this mindful expert, mindful eating expert. And well, and of course the journalist is like, well, we don't want, it's not about food. I'm like, ah, but they are the same thing. <laughs> so I manifest differently, but the anxiety is the same. So mm-hmm. I sent her the, the questions about money and said, don't bring up food. Answer the questions about money. Now she's well-trained because she's been with us like umpteen years. But if that had been another client, they'd been like, yeah, but my, my book's about food. I don't right. know, but your solution is about meditation and mindfulness. Your solution is about mindfulness. So apply it to money so that they can get in this, so we can plug your book, plug your book in an audience who's thinking about money. Now, if you're compulsive with money, I have a pretty darn good chance. You're probably compulsive with your food too. Yep. So that's how I watch my clients limit themselves. Authors limit themselves because they're so fixed that they've got this one way to tell the story and the only way to tell the story because they wrote the book. And I've written my own books and I've written other people's books. So I I so value the process in it. But when it comes to marketing, loosen the grips and expand the vision of the content you can speak about because that's where the opportunities lie and you want longevity. I keep telling my clients, I said, we're not trying to sell your book in the six or the one year contract that you have with us. We want your book to sell for the next 10 years. With this, this book, we want this book to be perpetually be on a bookstore, a bookshelf. That's how much work you put into it. And you and I know how hard it is to get book, real estate on bookstore bookshelves. Right. Actually, right? Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. We have we have a magazine article coming out. We have the Breakthrough Author magazine now. And we're we're talking about that in the April issue that you know it's about three three weeks now is the shelf life. Yes. So, you know, do you it becomes a return, which means yeah. us publishers buy our own books back. So I've paid for mm-hmm. it to go out on print. I paid for it to ship to the, the distributor. Then I paid for the distributor to ship it to the, the retailer. And if it only sit, if it doesn't sell, it, I buy, I have to buy it back. Yes. It's a return. So now I'm doing three to one on a product that I bought once. Authors don't understand this. Yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. Like the opportunity is there. So I want per- a perpetual reorder. They order usually in one, twos, or threes, one to threes. Mm-hmm. You want them to re- constantly, I know an author's like, oh my God, that's not a lot. No, but it is in one store, in one location over 10 years. That's a lot. You know, how many books do people actually buy? So it's very competitive. It is a, that shelf space is so competitive. And that's why these media opportunities and how we approach these media opportunities is so important. Yes, it definitely is. So I want to get into pitching a little bit when it, you pitch, and obviously you teach people how to pitch. Um, We talked a long time ago about how many authors go in and they'll pitch to a producer that they're an Amazon bestseller. Yes. What, what do you really need? Because, you know, we know that Amazon, Amazon bestseller is good if you're an entrepreneur and it's a nurture tool, but what if you're a serious author getting on TV? What do you really need that doesn't make you look amateurish? Great question. A good hook. Really, I, I, you know, because I'm my background's a TV producer. So I am the same person who received all of the book author pitches so I was the gatekeeper to putting them on the television shows, the talk shows like Montel or Maury Povich or CNBC or Wall Street Journal TV. I did talk shows for umpteen years before I had my own business. So I was the person who received the pitch, you know, and I'd get a one sheet. Publishers were the worst. They had the Random House, the Simon Schuster's, the Harper Collins, the, you know, the, these big, big houses that you're like so proud to have on your label. They would just send a one sheet and it would be all about the book. And I would be like, I hit my head up against the wall because I'm like, well, tell me about your author because I'm going to put your author on TV. Right. Your author is the one who has to, to, to tell the story, not the book. No one's reading the book on television. They're going to be t- talking to the author. Who's the author? Tell me about the author. So the publishers were the worst, which is why I honestly had the confidence to get into publishing because I was like, mm-hmm. I can't do worse than that. <laughs> At least I know how to tell a good, I know how to do a, write a good pitch. So when we pitch, you know, so when we're pitching, with retain your appetite, we're going to be going after the whole diet fad and the influencer conversation because there's so many 
influencers, I mean, even my own head spins, like, is it keto? Is it South beach? Is it intermittent fasting? Like, how are we supposed to be eating, especially as women? Like, let's just, you know, let's just talk about what, what, what the food program is that women, you know, are we supposed to have carbs? Not supposed to have carbs. We're supposed to have fat. We're not supposed to have fat. What about menopause? Like just all of that craziness. So we're, you know, we're going to be able to tap into that one pretty easily. And we'll be able to hit like the newsstand marketplaces. Cause there's literally magazines just based on weight loss alone. And, you know, and different shows and different and different content to do that um, is how we'll, we'll approach it. So uh, we'll be able to open up that one pretty easy, but some of the, some of the tougher nuts to crack, and I've had many um, great books. One book that we did uh, was really, the, t- the title was challenging. It was not my title. Sometimes I had get to have input. Sometimes I didn't. We had this really great guy, um, Ian, Ian, Ian Weiner. He wrote, wrote a book, um, My Truth Is Not The Truth which I like, I like theoretically. I don't know if I like it as a book title, but right. it, yeah, my, yeah oh, oh, it, that's that's the subtitle. That's actually the, oh my gosh, let me give you the um, proper title. How crazy is that? I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to the subtitle because the subtitle is actually what I remember. That, that's how much I didn't. I, rem- I would remember that because that, I love that when people say my truth, it's like, yeah. well, if my truth is my truth and your truth is to your truth, where is the diversity and inclusion if I don't think your truth is valid? <laughs> Right, right. Well, that's uh, that's not the name of the book. That's the part of the book I remember. So let me just grab you the, the name of the book. This is, this is like so important here. It makes my point in the weirdest way. Uh, where is his little his book here? Bear with me. Could you please this? I published it and I'm having to look it up. No, that, I, I've got the same thing. I was just going to mention, this is why a good title oh, is so good as well. Ubiqui- we- yes, Ubiquitous Relativity. Oh. Ubiquitous, for a lot of- yeah, Ubiquitous Relativity is the name of the book. We got the subtitle, My Truth is Not the Truth. That I can remember and that I understand. Ubiquitous mm-hmm. relativity was so challenged. And he's a Wall Street guy, really smart West Point, educated Wall Street guy. He's already had a TV career on CNBC. He talks stock market trades fast, tough, tough, tough guy. When the book came out, he basically told a story about how he's a Wall Street asshole and how <laughs> he, he realized that many people held different truths. And that it is their truth. It may not be the truth, but it is their truth. And he had to like rewrite his life around finding out what truth meant. It's a great story. Mm. And it came up during, yeah, it's there. It's all there. And he's great. Didn't love the title. My truth is not the truth is the part I read. That's the part I fought for. <laughs> Ubiquitous mm-hmm. relativity. I was like, oh, yeah. can't even say that. Couldn't even remember it. Uh, so anyway, um, my sixth sense. This is what we do, Juliet, right? You know, so I went after this is just starting a key kid book came out right around Me Too movement. Big, big deal. White men, not popular. Middle aged white men, not popular. Wall mm-hmm. Street, middle aged uh, white men, middle. not popular. <laughs> so I said, listen, if we're going to go for it. You're going to have to hit math, toxic masculinity. And I will tell you, I'm the first person to have gone after it. I'm not saying that it wasn't in the zeitgeist. But I saw that coming about 18 months. I said, you're going to need to go out there and confess that you are a toxic, toxic masculine. And he did. And we got him booked. We started getting him bookings. Like we started, we got him on KT. I got him on KTLA on the morning show. They were a little mean to him. They were a little derogatory, especially the other men. Believe it or not, it was the men that were derogatory to him. Wow. But then toxic masculinity has become now a collective culture phrase. We all know what it is. And, you know, it was, it was a, you know, it was a tough sell to get him to do because he had to have a little bit of humility and pride. But I said, but that's what your whole book is about. Your whole book is about your journey to humility. Mm-hmm. Your whole book is about this. So if you can't go out and express that and be that, then the, the, how am I going to help you? You know, but he, he did, he, he, he was very uncomfortable with it, but he did it. He looked very uncomfortable with it, but he did it. And we got the bookings, you know, and um, he got the public speaking. So, but I think, I think at the end of the day, he's like, yeah, I don't need this. And he went back to wall street. Um, but great guy, great story. But, but the toxic masculinity was the hook I needed to sell right. a book called ubiquitous ubiquitous relativity from a white man on wall street who's middle-aged that nobody cared about 
Was he fat too? No, <laughs> I'm just curious. No, I know, I know, I know. No, no, he's actually really, I used really to, handsome. When I was with Shy Day, I used to um, go to the New York office and we would go to Smith and Walensky's over uh, the, the Wall Street hangout. <laughs> and back in the 80s, very few, or late 80s, early 90s, very few women there. But that's the one thing I remember is most of the men were fat. Well, you saw <laughs> Wolf on Wall Street. Well, you're right. You yeah. saw Wolf on Wall Street um, with the character. Uh, and it was... Um, Leonardo DiCaprio's sidekick character was the fat guy because that's really what they looked like. They could like they couldn't, especially in the eighties. They couldn't. They can't indulge themselves enough. Like they couldn't indulge themselves with sex, money, and drugs enough. So they were fat. Yeah. Oh, but the cocaine should have made them skinny. That's what yeah. I don't get. Like there's there's a missing ingredient there. Absolutely. They should have made them skinny. Um. So that that is a great way of of saying too about why your title needs to be good. We have one coming out called Cracking the Cravings Code, which I think is an amazing is title for what she's doing. She's the. Um, I know what it's already about. Like just that. I know what it's about. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's, good. I know what the book. I know what the book is about just by that title. Yeah, exactly. And her first book was called The Domino Diet, which um, really is a sort of a deep dive into that emotional eating and why there's an emotional component to being overweight and emotional eating. And this is just the workbook that goes with it. But it's a catchy. We can't we couldn't believe that nobody else has ever named a book that titled a book that before. But that would be a hook. You did a very roundabout hook. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit, but it, yeah, I did. I did. I, I had to go full circle Well, because I had to walk, I had to maneuver around a media narrative that was an obstacle that I'm going to promote a financial white man, middle-aged white man on honesty in the middle of the Me Too movement. <laughs> But, but, but even better there is, is when you're pitching, you need to point out why your book is relevant because mm-hmm. we, we don't want old news on what you're booking. You have to tie it into what's into going Into what's on happening. Today. But people, yeah. And I always say to my clients, what you just saw on TV is already over. We don't go backwards. We move the conversation forwards. Right. Like, so we have to move into timelines that are because if you what producers are looking for is they're looking for the cutting edge, the next, the tipping point. They're not looking for what they already did last week. So right. you want to sell them on an answer to the craving code. I imagine she probably talks about DNA in there too. If, if she's talking about codes, you know, but something like that would be how I would go after is epi, epigenetics. Um, you know, either blood type, it would do it would be blood type or to say that why we have, you know, certain cravings or certain foods might be mm-hmm. these causes and conditions right. and kind of hit it from that, that perspective. And I know nothing about the book. I'm just, yeah, her, the title. hers is, hers is actually a workbook um, in conjunction with the Domino diet, but it is about the mindfulness of, you know, what's behind those cravings and, and how you need to monitor and shift and, you know, when you fall off, get back up. So there's, there's a lot there, but if it's more of a workbook in conjunction. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's a workbook. It's still, it's still a book. It's still sellable. She still has the information and even more so. And that's where I would, I would look for her is I would, I would go after the blood types, the DNA, epi, 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 genetics, because those are really hot conversations right now. And mm-hmm. she doesn't have to be an expert. She just brings her expertise to it, which is I'm always telling my clients, you don't have to be an expert on everything. You just have to bring your expertise to that conversation because it's another way people limit themselves. You know, and I get pushed on that sometimes, even when I do the appearances on Newsmax, you know, the next thing I know, they just ask me about the debt, tr- you know, the trillion dollar debt bill, you know, like, well, my first, my first thought in my head, my head goes off like an emoji, at least in my mind. And I'm thinking like, well, I didn't actually read the bill. <laughs> That's the first thing well, I think. I'm, yeah, because it's like hundreds of thousands of pages with stuff buried into it. But my head, explodes. I'm one of those that believes the federal government should have a budget and stick within it, just like my household does. <laughs> well, my reaction is, well, with they just all I can just say is they rob the bank. They just rob the bank. They just rob the bank. Free for all. Yeah. Free for all. Yeah. Free for all. So, you know, so sometimes I'm asked questions that are, you know, typically out of my wheelhouse. Yeah. And so, you know, but it, it, you know, you, you comment from where you're at and, um, you know, from your own expertise on it and, you know, you can qualify it. You know, I'm not, I don't, you, it, those are great. You can disclaim yourself and still give an answer. You know, I'm not an expert on, you know, national economics, but what I can tell you as a federal taxpayer looks to me like they just robbed the federal reserve. Right. <laughs> 
That's a good, that's a good answer. So you have to be able to think on the fly. Yes. Yes. But you know, if you, if, if you listen to me or my other guest spurts, we, we use the same setups, you know, um, you know, thank you, Juliet, for, you know, asking that and what I can tell you is, or, you know, I don't know that, but what I can say is, is my favorite qualifier. You know, I don't know the answer to that question, but what I can tell you, and you offer something up and every politician knows that. And that's what they do. So, okay. So yes. I have to ask you this because I, I, I'm, I suspect people need to work with you one-on-one or a course or something because they have to practice because the two times that I've been on television, it seems like I'm nervous, I'm shaky, and I, I, I feel like I'm going to forget everything I learned. How do you get yourself in that space so you're not trembling, you're com- you know, you're not sweating, you're confident? How, where does that come from, and how how much do you have to practice? So for my from from my TV producing days, because my job also when I go into the green room, you're my guest on the show. I go in and I greet you, and then I would regurgitate back to you, Julia. So you're going to go on the show. You're going to have three minutes. You're going to you're going to talk to Kathy Lee Gifford on the show, and you're going to tell her you're going to tell her why publishing is important, how it grows your business. And you're going to tell them the story about the workbook, the, uh, the book that's coming up, but don't have to worry about, you know, don't have to worry about plugging it or getting it right. Just tell us what, you know, the information as to why this, you know, cravings, cravings affect your DNA. So I give you all that in there. Now, if you're not nervous, either meeting me, being my, you're not nervous in there, then I'm going to leave the room and I'm going to go throw up. Because an unnervous guest Ooh. is a dead guest. Really? An unnervous guest is a flat guest. An unnervous guest is a guest who's actually not in their body and probably only in their head. A nervous guest is in their body. And I actually don't, I'm actually okay with the fact that you in that moment don't remember anything. Because there is a data dump that needs to happen. The toilet needs to flush. You need to be in your body so that when you're there, you're hyper present. Because what makes a good TV appearance is hyper presence. And I'll tell you why. Because you need the energy to transcend this equipment, this this camera, the whether it's cables, Wi-Fi, you need to have energy to transmit out into the field through technology, then into somebody else's cell phone or television set where they're distracted, where they're got, they're on, they're doing other things and you have to get their attention. Mm. And if you don't have energy to command the technology and the systems that we have to function, whether it's a satellite, a cable in the ground, a, a Wi-Fi, which is just air frequency, then you don't have enough energy and I've got a dead flat fish and I'm going to about to like my, that three minutes is going to feel like 40 dry minutes to me painful. So nervousness is not something that needs to be um, conquered. It's actually something that needs to be um, like embraced. And I get nervous every single time I do it. Every time I'm like staring at the dot, sometimes they have me out standing there waiting, staring at that dot with a smile on my face. I'm waiting 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And then I finally, and then they're like, okay, and they'll come in your ear and they'll be like, okay, uh, Jackie, we're going to be in the next commercial. And then I'm like, (gasps) you know, and I'm like, you know, and then you just have to, just like we do, we we breathe right through it. We stay present and then you stay hyper-focused on that little dot. You stare at that dot like your life depends on it. You don't look at, you do not get distracted with your own image. You do not get distracted with their image. You don't get distracted with the video that they're showing. You've got nothing else to do but to stare at that dot Mm -hmm. and you don't let it go. And then what I will do to myself is that because we're, we're, we're into the audio, because we're on doing the zoom, the way we do it, then I just focus in my ears. I keep my eyes focused and I just focus on the sound coming in my ears and I don't worry about the screen and I don't worry about the picture. And because we watch zoom and we see people, we, we see when their eyes are like checking each other. It's yes. very distracting, especially, yeah. you know, especially on the big national shows when we're watching it and you, you've got the person going like, you know, like you're, it's very, it's just extraordinarily distracting and it, and it gives the illusion of suspicion. And I'm not really sure why it's because it, it mimics eye contact 
It mimics eye contact. So, you know, when you're talking to somebody and their eyes are going like this, it feels mm-hmm. shifty and suspicious. And, yeah. and we're, we have the same reaction when we're watching it. So two things to focus on is that little dot and just listen into your ears. And then I hear the whole thing coming through my ears like we're doing on a phone. And I'm able to manage it, but there is not a time I don't get nervous. There's also, I sometimes start thinking faster than my words are coming out, mm. you know? So I've got to like, I've got to stay present to actually what I'm saying, not what I'm thinking, because that sometimes I'll get too fast into my next thought. And I didn't quite finish or connect the dots in my thoughts. So, um, but so, but that's what I'm saying. Nervousness is important. And then I'll go back and watch it. And I can see that I'm animated. I can see that I'm holding the energy that I can see that on this, you know, flat linear two-dimensional space that I have held my own energetic field amongst the other people who are doing it too. But it takes a lot of focus and, and I'm always nervous, very, very nervous. Like I, like, I just like, I feel like, (gasps) You know, so, but it's important to be nervous. That's, that's good because I often tell um, my people too, that when I, if you're on TV, nobody is standing there waiting to write down the name of your book. There has to be some sort of present that says, Ooh, I need that. And, you know, mothers are making dinner and you yes. know, fathers are taking care of kids. There has to be something that makes me say, Oh, where's a piece of paper, or a pen. I got to write that down real quick. That you have to have that energy to have people do that. Yes, that and, and that's it's like yeah, you that that's you're so right on. That's exactly it, and it has to be an attractive energy. Like you have to draw the attention away from whatever somebody else is doing because nobody just sits and watches TV anymore. Most likely, they're on the phone watching TV, like which is so crazy. So yeah, they're not sitting there with a pen and a pad going to write down your book, but you, but you want to make an impression. You want to make an imprint, a positive imprint on whoever that, that viewer is. I had a, um, one of my doctors just did um, a less popular news show. It's NTD news. And you know, it's just kind of like, oh, it's NTD news. It's kind of YouTube-ish. I don't really want to do it. But then I, you know, then she, we, um, we had a client that was in Asia and saw it air so and they came back and said oh my god i saw dr you know dr selena on ntd news it was the weirdest thing but you don't know where it goes especially Mm -hmm. at this this day and time we don't know where these things going i mean i went through the jakarta uh in in jakarta airport and i saw one of our client books at the airport um in the airport bookstore like we don't know where where when we put ourselves out there how far a reach we have and where, where it goes to, which is why we're doing it because we only have so much reach within our own sphere of influence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why we, we, we put ourselves out here like this, but I mean, I'm the person who still wants to throw up every time you put a company newsletter out too. like, <laughs> oh my God, please don't make sure there's no mistakes. I don't offend anybody, you know, like I you know. know, so I'm not, I've never, I've never gotten over like putting myself out there. I just do it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It can be tough, but I was also going to say too, you, you have to be open to those new sources that even seem YouTube ish now, because people are turning off their televisions and going to independent news sources. So I, you know, I don't get any of my news source from social media anymore because it's all fake news. Um, but there are also several, I don't know, prime time, news channels that are fake news. So I think you have to be really careful about turning things down because you don't, you know, some of the, some of these podcasts are live streamed and they have more viewers than CNN on any given show. So, and so now it becomes like, choose your, you have the power to choose and choose wisely, use discernment and follow, you know, follow wisely, but we have the power to do that. Now we have the power not to listen to just three stations or five stations and, and be fed only what they are. You know, we were able to now fo- follow cr- people that we respect and that we find credible and we resonate with and that we're applying discernment to. And I think that's really, really powerful. I don't know if you know my, um, my, 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 my brat random fact toyed, but uh, I might've shared it with you, but Joe Rogan's my cousin. His grandfather is my grandmother's sis- brother, sister. Uh-huh. So just think that's kind of like this random piece of 
family. I was like, oh my God, Joe Rogan's going to red pill all the men on the planet now. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of, I kind of love yesterday and, and I know this, this is in March, but yesterday, Neil, Neil Young saying it's him or me. And it's like, yes. Joe Rogan drives 11 million people to Spotify pretty much daily and maybe a million people a year downline. That's a no, that's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. Like, <laughs> okay. It's Joe Rogan <laughs> who probably wishes, who probably really wishes that Spotify would just buy out his contract and get rid of him because yeah. why not? <laughs> right. right, 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 right. Exactly. Start his so. own network. So I know you have, you don't have them finished yet, but you have courses coming up where people can learn some of this. Where does my audience find you if they want to get on a list? They want to find out more. TV on camera training, TV on camera training. Um, On Instagram, we're starting media memberships. So we want it where um, we're working to start more of a like where we all cast our vote for what we see as truthful media. <gasps> we're going to participate in a group just like group participation in what we see as truthful media because it's only in our definition of it that it can become a collective reality as opposed yes. to the other way it is now where we're just fed it so we want to yeah. invert that so that's on instagram if you have um have a moment to to, to follow that and of course our company's tv guest for so um, I'm always happy to participate in our conversations, Julia. I really appreciate you and all that you do. Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. Do you have an email or anything if someone wants to yeah. reach out and find out oh, more? Sure. It's, uh, Jay Jordan, uh, J-J-O-R-D-A-N at tvguestpert.com. And that's T-V-G-U-E-S-T-P-E-R-T.com. Just like my name signature down there. So please, yeah, feel free to send me an email. Happy to support in any way I can. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much. I always Thank appreciate you. you're so busy taking the time to talk to my audience and, and tell them, you know, what opportunities are out there for them. Yeah. Love it. Thank you so much.